Oh, good morning, Common Ground. Welcome to church on this wonderful Sunday morning. God's blessed us with some rain this morning, and it was a pleasure to get up and see some uh, cooler air. And I say cooler, it's still 90 degrees outside. Anyways, we're so glad you're here joining us with us today. Come on in, and uh, everybody just stand to our feet, and let's praise God this morning with Step by Step. Sing with me now. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will hurt. this morning let's praise our lord and savior amen you may be seated good morning common ground welcome to all of you this morning and welcome to those of you joining us online we are finally back in our space together this morning it's always a pleasure to worship with the traditional service and to hear the sermons that we wouldn't otherwise hear but golly we miss our space and we are now going to have to train people that we're back to meeting here in common ground it's summer we give grace but Nevertheless, we are going to worship this morning no matter how many people we have with us. Uh, we have uh, a lot of things to go through today. We have more music. We have some announcements. And then we'll have our offering at the end. I will tell you right up front, we are beginning to collect for the Network of Community Ministries. They have a back-to-school backpack bash. And so there will be various ways to contribute to that. But they also are looking to collect food for snacks for the kiddos and they'll do individually wrapped things like snacks and and things of that nature there'll be more in the church behold about it but there is the basket back in the back and you'll see that as we continue throughout the month of august before school starts let me bless our gathering this morning glorious heavenly father you have called us you have given us the day you have already blessed us with clouds and rain and here in this part of the world dear lord it is a welcome change we ask that as we have gathered, you would bless our time together. You would clear our minds. You would give us hearts open to you to hear the word that you have for us today, that each of us would carry something from this sermon. We give great thanks to those who have joined us, and we ask that your presence be with all of us. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Let's continue to worship our Lord and Savior this morning with song. And once again, stand to your feet, and let's sing, Be Glorified in Me. Has captured me. Your grace has set me free. Your love, the air I breathe. Be glorified in me. Sing your love. Your love has captured me your grace has set me free your life the air i breathe be glorified in me be You 
set my feet. You set my feet to dancing. You set my heart on fire in the presence of a thousand kings. You are my one desire. I stand before you now with trembling hands lifted high. Be glorified. Sing, be glorified. Be glorified in me. Be glorified in me. Be glorified in me. Be glorified. You set my feet to dancing. You set my heart on fire. In the presence of a thousand kings, you are my one desire. I stand before you now with trembling hands lifted high. Be glorified. Amen. One of my favorite songs that we do often here is a song simply named Kindness. And it's a word we just want to spread through the entire world today about being kind to each other representing and showing the love that we have and that God has for us by being kind. Open up the skies of mercy. Rain down the cleansing flood. Healing waters rise around us. Hear our cries, Lord, let them rise. Open up the skies of mercy and rain down the cleansing flood, healing waters rise around us hear our cries Lord let them rise it's your kindness Lord that leads us to repentance your favor Lord is our desire it's your beauty Lord that makes us stand in silence your love better than life. We can feel your mercy falling. You are turning our hearts back again. Rise to heaven, draw us near, Lord, meet us here. It's your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your favor, Lord, is our desire. It's your beauty, Lord. That makes us stand in silence. Your love, your love. Yes, it's your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your favor, Lord, is our desire. It's your beauty, Lord, that makes us stand in silence. Your love, your love is better than life. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, dear Lord. Thank you for the kindness, God, that you have instilled and put into our hearts. God, help us to show that kindness in everything we do in each and every day. It's all built on your Son, and the sacrifice that he made for us, dear Lord. 
God, we lift up a special prayer for Rosanny and her family this morning as she's sealed with a newborn. We pray that you give her the strength and the encouragement and the healing, dear Lord, that she needs and the whole family does, Lord. Thank you for sharing Klein to be here this morning to lead us in worship. We pray all these things in your precious name. And the people said, Amen. You may be seated. And to the band. You praise right. God. It's amen. Amazing. Amazing. Hi, everyone. Um, I haven't met everybody here yet, but uh, my name is Shandon Klein, and I'm so honored to be here. And um, thank you to those who are online watching as well. Um, Rose Danny, uh, Pastor Rose Danny, is one of my seminary sisters um, from Perkins School of Theology. You know, um, and I was so honored that she asked for me to uh, to preach with you guys today. Um, our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it is in chapter 2, and it's verses 1 through 11. Now hear these words. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy make my joy complete be of the same mind having the same love being in full accord and of one mind do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit but in humility regard others as better than yourselves let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god uh, join your hearts with me in prayer god may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts today be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So who here has actually read the letter of, to the Philippians? Anybody? I'm like, you know, like, you know, you'd be surprised. I mean, I think that Paul would have been shocked to know <laughs> that his letter to one of his churches got published in scripture. <laughs> you know, um, the, like, it, it's really good to put in perspective what was going on um, with the Philippians. Again, this letter to the Philippians is a letter of a pastor to his church, the church that he planted. It was one of the earlier churches that he planted. It was the first church that he actually planted in Europe. And so it, it was kind of, you know, his baby. And at the time when he's writing this, he's in jail yet again <laughs> for preaching the word of God. And you can't really help to think if you're, you're putting yourself in 
Paul's shoes. You, you've planted this church. You want the best for this church going on. Uh, you've left them. You're like, hey, they've got some great leadership. You're good to go. And you move on and you are now facing possibly your execution for the, the word of God, of spreading the love of God, of recognizing your call as you're traveling elsewhere. And he knows that word is going to travel back to that fledgling church that he planted. And he knows that they also are going to go through persecution. The biggest thing that's important to them is, uh, to him, is that they still keep persisting in the faith regardless of that persecution. So he, he starts out by just saying, hey, you know, I thank God for every remembrance of you. I, I miss you, y'all. <laughs> like, um, he's in this dingy prison sitting there with, you know, his, his paper and writing this out and pouring his heart out to the Philippians. And the biggest thing that he, that he is worried about is that they are of the same mind. There is nothing that can divide us more <laughs> than if we don't focus on the right thing. Now, it's really, really easy to be of one mind in any kind of group. It's easy to be of one mind when you're kind of isolated in your, your own little bunkers with the same people around you, usually, right? But you have to think about Philippi. Philippi is, this, is a small town, but it's surrounded by the power of the Roman Empire. And I don't know about you, but the Roman Empire is huge has a lot of influence, and they're scary <laughs> to deal with. They are persecuting people, and when we say persecuting, it was, you know, physically harming people for their beliefs or who they are. And it's, it's one thing that I think that Paul is really intimate with, of, of recognizing that it matters where your mind is focused. And sometimes to be of the same mind, you have to also step back and recognize when your mind is misaligned from that of Christ. Because so, when he goes through and he talks about making my joy complete, being of the same mind, the same love, being a full of cord of one mind, we find out that it's not just any mind that he is calling them to, but being of the same mind in you that was in Jesus Christ. That's a little different. Paul knows something about that. See, this Paul person used to be Saul. This was the Saul that persecuted the Jews for the things that they believed. He had grown up and followed everything to the letter of the law. He was Jewish. He was, uh, like he says, uh, Hebrew's Hebrew. He was, he was a scholar. He knew all of the different laws. He knew them to the letter. And at that point, he, he saw that there was this uprising of people who kept on claiming that this this Jesus of Nazareth of all places we're talking about a place that's on the south side of Galilee nothing good comes out of Nazareth and that person is saying that they are the son of God that is a lot of power <laughs> to be assuming and I mean think about it what if somebody were to walk in through those doors into your church, come in and be like, you know what? I'm the son of God. Would, would y'all just 
would y'all take that or would you laugh at him? Would you? I mean, like that, that was a serious blasphemy for somebody to, to just say like, I'm, I am the son of God. I have been given this power. I am this or whatever. And then, you know, eventually does all of these different miracles and all of that. But there's a problem because they have been told all their lives, there is one God, one God. So if you're going to say that you are the son of God, that you have all the power of God, like you're equating yourself to God. No, that's not possible. You're a human being. I see you right there. You're human. No, that's blasphemy. So he follows the letter of the law and for blasphemy, sin, it's death. We're talking about the Saul that watched Stephen, a disciple, who spoke boldly about Jesus and honestly called, them, called all of them out saying, hey, you say that you follow the letter of the law, but you're not following it. You stick, stick your stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the, pro which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous run, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones who received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it in Acts uh, chapter 7. That's what Stephen was telling them and pouring out to them. And Saul ends up holding the cloaks of the people who stoned Stephen to death. In the midst of that, Stephen, who's the disciple of Christ, as they were stoning him, he prays, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, and then knelt down and cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And then when he said that, he died, and Saul approved of their killing him. So, a little while later, Saul receives a wake-up call, one that he was not prepared for. And so I want to read this story to you. I know that many of you have heard of the Damascus Road that uh, Saul was a part of, but I want you to hear this with the ears knowing that he would plant a church one day. So this is in chapter 9 in Acts, um, in Acts, starting at verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats of murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for the letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, that's the way of the disciples, um, women or uh, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you'll be told what you are to do. And the men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And they led him by hand and brought him to Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate or drank. So one of the things to recognize is that back, um, back then where the, the type of society that they lived in and 
because of some of the laws that were in their Torah, people who were blind were banned from being able to go into the synagogues. They were considered unclean. So imagine this person who is like the scholar of scholars, the, the person who is of course supposed to ha- know everything, that knows everything about God, ends up being the one who is now unclean. He now knows what it feels like to be persecuted, to be the one that's blind, the one that's cast out. And so he, he goes down and uh, the story continues. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarshish named Saul. At this moment, as he was praying, he saw in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much evil he has done to your saints in in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who evoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and the kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he, will, he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, and he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. And immediately afterward, he goes to Damascus, the place that he was about to go and persecute all the Christians that spoke about this Lord Jesus. Goes into the synagogues just as Jesus did. Says, y'all, they were right. I was wrong. And it was powerful. It moved them. Many believers were, were born from that. But again, the people who were in power, the high priests, were like, wait a minute, this doesn't work. He was imprisoned and eventually comes out. Um, but that changed his whole life. I, re- I remember my... Um, there was a congregant of mine, a dear congregant and friend of mine, had asked me, is it okay to God if I ever change my mind about something? Like I had an idea of something that was of God and I found out that it wasn't. Like, is it okay to God if I change my mind? think that the story of Paul reminds us that like God, God wants to be able to use us in whatever our circumstances are, even if we have, have been the wrong ones, if we admit when we're wrong and, and choose to, to turn back to God, God can do something with that. You only need a little bit. And so focusing on that same mind that was of Christ Jesus, he remembers that he has this this small church, that still fledgling church that is struggling with persecution, the persecution that he used to do. And he says, remember 
to be of the same mind, keep that focus and make that focus that of Christ Jesus, who had all of this power that he had. He had, he was God incarnate. He was God with us. And yet he decided to humble himself, to take a second and actually interact with the oppression that humans were, were a part of, instead of just reading it in a scripture, in a synagogue, or in a church. Decided to, to be a part of it, decided to, to go and, and talk to those who were in power and say, hey, what you are doing against these marginalized people is not right. To flip the script on what real power is, real power in vulnerability, that willingness to go to a horrible, horrible death on account of those who could not speak. Be of that mind. The mind that in one case is willing to flip over a few tables when there's some money changers out there trying to take advantage of a church, but also having the same kind of compassion to look at a centurion soldier who likely persecuted many of his people, but recognized the change in heart and healed his child. Be of the same mind that was within Christ Jesus, who emptied himself as a slave, the one that, was, that he chose to do, something that he chose to be a part of, being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, which if you thought about it in modern times, it'd be something like, like lethal injection. There's a little uh, a pendant, it's a necklace that a colleague of mine has that shows the cross, but the cross looks like, um, like Jesus who's getting lethal injection. A lot of us don't recognize the pain of the cross, And it's not until you see those images and you recognize what, how horrible of the death of Jesus to understand the resurrection afterwards and the power that came after that. And through that resurrection, we are empowered as a church to continue the mission of Jesus Christ, to stand up for the least and the last and the lost. To be there for the people who have been pushed to the side. Friends, we, we have many who are being persecuted right now in our world. And it is really easy to be of one mind and gang up on one group. Enter your political group here. Be of one mind and do that. But, but God calls us to something different. God calls us to be in unity, not, not this, this, this uniformity and not this peace that everybody has to think alike. Unity in the belief that God is for all of us, that we are all a part of God's creation and that we all deserve to be in shalom. It is this mind that Jesus calls us to. You pray with me. God, thank you so much for your empowerment, for your story, for helping us recognize that even when we get it wrong, you give us a chance to turn back and make it right. 
We pray for those who are persecuted. And we recognize the times that we have been the persecutor. And we pray that you give us the strength and the courage to recognize when we are that persecutor, to turn back to you so that we can stand with those who are hurt, who deserve to know about God's love, and so that we can be a light in the world. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Got green, there we go, got green light and sound. A uh, few announcements for you today. Uh, Mark graciously mentioned Rose Danny. We have all been looking for updates, and while she's not sending out written updates, uh, I was able to spend some time at the hospital yesterday with Daniel while she took a break and went home to see her daughters and her husband. And as best we can tell, this is the first time she's left the hospital since they were care flighted back three weeks ago. So from the perspective of Daniel, he's doing great. He, he looks wonderful. He's at that stage at seven, almost eight weeks, where you can smile and he will smile in return. Um, he has several issues that they are dealing with, but this most recent week they've inserted a tube into his tummy so he can be fed without having any of the choking incidents that he was dealing with. So it's a matter now of that little trachea growing like it's supposed to, and in the meantime, he's getting, he's getting big. He's getting big. We were able to hold him, and that baby's like over 11 pounds now, so he is definitely gaining weight. Um, Rose Danny is doing well. She's seeking the, the help that she needs, the depression, and the things that she's dealt with have been heavy on her mind, but she is seeking all the help she properly needs. She was able to go home yesterday and be with Luis and the girls, and they went swimming and did all kinds of things. So for each of us, I would ask that we remain in prayer for that family. Uh, we will figure out ways that we can help them in the, f in the near future. Um, they're not close to the church, so it's not easy to take food by, but we're working on a plan where perhaps we can do DoorDash gift certificates and things that can get, be given to Luis and to Rose Danny so they can move forward in that regard. But please keep them in your prayers. Uh, I had mentioned the uh, Network of Community Ministry, Back to School, Backpack Bash. One of the things that they ask for is donations of to their clothing closet for children going back to school. And some of those things include new uh, uniform components. They mention khaki pants and polo shirts. They also mention new socks and underwear for children. So that may be easier for those of you who shop in places without knowing the, the components for the uh, back to school clothing. Also the food that I mentioned, and they specifically mentioned canned meat and fish. This is like tuna fish, and you know, you can get hams and uh, spam if you do spam, but, but canned meats, there's chilies and all kinds of things like that. Um, meat and fish, baking items like oil and sugar and flour, and then the single snack servings, like I mentioned, everything being individually wrapped. So there's a basket outside of Shay's office, there's a basket here in the back, and we will bring those through this month to be able to be donated to them. Uh, next weekend is our weekend at Austin Street. That would be Sunday the 16th. For those of you who are interested in participating, we will meet here at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning, take our food and carpool over, and serve those at the Austin Street Center. Uh, we do this once a quarter, and Jim Veach is in charge of coordinating this for us, so questions can be forwarded to Jim or if, if I can help in any way. And then the other thing that we have, our new, our new pastor, Frank Drenner, has decided Frank is a baseball nut. So what he's going to do is on the 6th of August, that Sunday, at 1.35, we're going to go, those who are interested, he'll preach and then we'll go to grab a box lunch from Jason's here at the church, and they're going out to the ballpark to watch a Rangers game. And let's see... Who are they playing? Marlins. They're playing the Marlins. So your $30 ticket will include your box lunch and your ticket to the game. And at this point, uh, you all can touch base with Shay. I can refer you to Shay. But for those of you online who have questions, she's the one putting this together for Frank. So that's something that we are looking forward to doing. Frank is 
determined to in inject the baseball theme on that Sunday, so you all carefully consider that. That would be a month for now. It's time for our offering, and you will notice the basket on the back, as always, on the, on the table back there. For those of you who are here and would like to do an attendance card, you've got them in your chairs, and you know that the prayer requests go on the back, and that and your offering can be dropped in the basket in the back. For those of you who have joined us online, we always have the svumc.org forward slash donate, where you can make your offering by credit card online. Uh, we encourage that, and, and at the same time, you can reach out to the church with your prayer request, not having white cards at home with you to register attendance. If you would now bow with me, we will bless our offering. Glorious Heavenly Father, we have come to you today with hearts full. We have received a message in the way that we should act, in the image we should emulate, and the way we should go from this place. As we leave our offerings and walk out the door, dear Lord, we know that you will be with us. You will allow our offerings to be used in a way to glorify you. You will see that those things that we donate from our selves, from the glory and the bounty that you have given us, will be used to your honor in a way that hopefully others will have their eyes opened to you, to your glory, to the joy that we would spread, and for the ways that we can do things in your name. We ask your blessing upon the people here, those joining us online, and we go from this place knowing that you are with us. We ask these prayers in your son's holy, precious, and risen name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Well, it's good to be back at Common Ground. Amen. Amen. We'll see you again here next week. Ask some people to come with you, and uh, we can fill this place back up again. Thank you once again, Sharon, for bringing your message. We pray God's blessing on you and your ministry. Stand to your feet now as we sing the blessing. benediction may our gracious God who loves you more than you could ever ask or imagine empower you to speak up when you see things are wrong to be in power to be the light in a world that needs it so much amen amen
There's a name that can silence every fear. There's a love that embraces the heartache, the pain, and the tears. Through my faith and my doubting, I know one thing for sure. His word is unfailing. His promise secure. Told him I'll start again. Everything will be alright. Whole world's in his hands. Your whole world's in his hands. In the darkness and the trials, he's faithful and he is true. The whole world's in his hands. You don't.